What's up guys? Hey, if you're watching our channel, we're pretty sure you love the NBA. But did you know that the NBA schedule has some insane requirements? Everybody who's watched the NBA or any other professional sports league must have thought how hard it must be to create the schedule for each season. Another thought would be how the people who actually make the schedule even get started on something so complex especially in the NBA's case with their 82 game seasons. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about 10 things you probably didn't know about the NBA schedule. Number 10, each team has to play four games against all four of their division opponents. This is the first step in the NBA schedule formula, and it's a critical part of its success over the years. These games end up attributing to about 16 of the team's total regular season games. Number nine, each team must play four games against six out-of-division conference opponents. This is another specific matchmaking rule that must be followed by the league. That puts us at an additional 24 games and brings the schedule to a total of up to 40 so far. Number eight, teams must play three games against the last four remaining conference teams. Those conference teams that weren't played four times would just have to play three times instead. Adding on these 12 total games rounds out each schedule to about 52 at this point. Number seven, the last part of the schedule making formula is that each team must play two games against teams in the opposing conference. This goes for every single team that there is over on the other side. They would play each of those teams twice and it would round out the remaining 30 games that have to be played. Then after you put all these rules together so far, you've got a nice 82 game season for each NBA team. Number six, there are three official breaks in the schedule that there will never be any games played on that day. The first day would be Christmas Eve. Now, obviously we still have Christmas Day games, that's a big tradition, but the day before is completely off limits in the league. The second day is the All-Star game. How you feeling being your first All-Star game? It's a dream come true. Uh, <laughs> this is usually played during All-Star weekend, which is basically a break in the season for teams, and players use it to rest their bodies and have some fun at the halfway point. <laughs> and then finally, the other break is on the night of the NCAA championship game. This one might not be known to a lot of people, but the NBA prides itself on the next generation of superstars. So they take this day off so that the world puts all their focus on those young men and women that got themselves into the biggest game of their lives up to that point. Number five, every single team has to send the league a full list of three different things regarding court availability. The first thing that must be mentioned is 50 dates in which their home court will be available for games to be played. It's unlikely that all those dates will be used, but they like to have some wiggle room in determining home and away games. The next thing that needs to be there is that they have to list four Mondays. It can be easy for owners to just determine that they don't want to play on certain days of the week otherwise. And lastly, they need to jot down four Thursdays. This is just to help TNT with their broadcast. Number four, all teams that happen to have an NHL team playing under the same home stadium must resolve any scheduling issues that may occur. The league demands that the organizations themselves are able to get their court situated before the game is supposed to be played. They don't want any part in the conflicts that could arise from two teams from different pro sports intertwining. And I tell you what, if you don't want any of these conflicts yourself, then you should go ahead and subscribe to our channel. It's better than dealing with all that conflict. Anyways, back to the video. Number three, all games that are on the schedule could in fact be moved. This is because of the NBA's TV partners like ESPN, TNT, and ABC. These partners could want certain big time games played while they're broadcasting. The NBA could then shift some things around ahead of time and give the teams and players enough notice so that it's not a big deal. Players must really always be ready for times to change on games though. You can never fully bank on a game going down 100% at the originally scheduled time. Number two, the league has put more effort into avoiding having a tired team play against a fresh and well-rested one. They want to give each side an equal chance to come away with the win, which is why the scheduling folks up there chose to eliminate teams from playing four games in five nights. This was able to happen because the league extended the total time that the schedule would last. An extra week was added onto the end, which I think moved it out to about 176 days total. Number one, each team gets to mark down three dates that they would like to play a game on. 
We mentioned earlier that each organization is required to mark down 50 dates with some requirements. Well, those teams can pick out three priority dates as well. Matt Winnick, the senior vice president in charge of scheduling operations for the league, spoke out about these priority options in an interview about a decade ago. Winnick said, they're allowed three priority dates, dates when they'd like to play at home. They have no input as to who their opponent would be, but they get three priority options. Teams use them for various reasons, some for competitive reasons, some for marketing reasons. He dove a little deeper after that statement and mentioned that a team may mark a priority date because they could have a huge state convention coming around or something of that nature. It's just another really interesting kind of tidbit that could impact the schedule more than we even know. And that about does it for this video on these 10 facts about the NBA schedule and how it's currently created. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out the video that appears on your screen next.